Hi, I'm Dr. Angela Yankee. And I'm Dr. Kathleen O'Neill Smith. Welcome back to the Fire Em Up Doctors, the Good Medicine Doctor Series. We are so glad you joined us. We want to provide you with credible health resources, guide you in your treatment options, and fire you up to take control of your health. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our Fire Em Up Doctors webinar. I'm so happy to have you all on today. This week, and actually this month, we are talking about fascia. Dr. Aki is going to be flying solo today, so I will go ahead and introduce her now. Hi, Dr. Aki. Hi, everybody. It's so nice to see you. Hi, Emily. Hello. Thank you all for coming. Yeah, I'm flying solo. Uh, Dr. Kathleen and I have been working on the Farm Up Doctor content for the next six months, but she was called back to Boston for a sad event, actually a funeral. So she had to go unexpectedly. So I'm going to go ahead and, and teach this class today. Uh, this month, the theme is going deeper than the skin. It's National Skin uh, Month, but Underneath the skin is something called soft tissue or fascia, and it's so critical to understand fascia. So as we told you before, the first part of this will actually be a patient case. That's week one. Uh, next week, we're hopefully going to have a guest, and, or, and I'll be teaching more on soft tissue. On um, week three, we're going to talk about variations on a theme. We're going to talk about regenerative um, therapy called platelet-rich plasma. And please don't forget to mark out your calendars for Thanksgiving, uh, November 26th, Christmas Eve, and New Year's Eve, because we will be spending time with our families and we will not be doing webinars on those dates. But we are so grateful that you've come to join us. So without further ado, we're going to teach like we teach to other doctors and medical students. We're going to do a case. Next slide. Now this case is actually, the audio was deleted to protect privacy, but uh, if you turn it on, Emily, I'll, I will narrate what's going on. So this is two weeks ago, Dr. Kathleen had just flown in from Boston to help me with some ch uh, challenging regenerative cases. And usually we do cases that conventional medicine does not help. In this particular case, this is a 60 year old woman who 18 months ago was involved in a severe car accident. So she actually has pain over the right shoulder where I'm pointing out. It's throbbing pain. If 10 out of 10 is the worst pain of her life, she's rating it at eight to nine out of 10 all the time. She's a very busy professional. She's pointing to it. It's going down her neck, into the scapula, into the shoulder. In fact, they thought it was primarily a shoulder problem. So she's actually had a first shoulder surgery that failed because she had pain. So they went in there and has, she had a second shoulder su surgery. And that's what sometimes happens when we have soft tissue or fascial injuries. Uh, when the doctor does surgery and they don't get better, they're like, oh, why don't we go back and do surgery again? But the problem is if the diagnosis isn't quite right, you actually just form more scar tissue. And it's really important to understand during this 30 minutes that the soft tissue or fascia is like one contiguous sheet of saran wrap rolled from here to the wall. And we're folded into numerous folds all, of, all around the body, around every organ, every tissue, every cell, every muscle cell, and that's fascia. And so here I'm showing you that she has a problem with her superficial arm line. This is actually a book that I was so privileged to co-edit with David Lezondak, who is one of the premier world fascial experts. And uh, it just got released in August and it's still number one on in sports medicine and Amazon. Because when you understand soft tissue and fascia, we're gonna understand how to treat much, much better. And so the problem is she has pain, pain from the top of the head, down the right shoulder, down the back, radiating to her hands. She's busy. Uh, she has a grandchild that's four or five years old whenever she can and it's really causing problems in her personal life, sleep, pain, as well as her ability to interact with her family, specifically her grandson. So when we look at fascia with the eyes of understanding something called fascial anatomy, and that's today's FAQ lesson, is to really understand 
the difference between classical anatomy, which is what we're taught in medical school, which are origins and insertions of muscles. Fascial anatomy is different. It has to do with functional anatomy. Not only will you understand why acupuncture meridians when treated well actually works, there's actually 80% overlap between acupuncture meridians and fascial meridians or fasciatomes. Isn't that interesting? Or, or one body. And most of these folds actually happened in third week in your mother's womb. The folds that cause the fascia to be contiguous happened in the third week of embryology. And so this is a revolution now in medicine and sports medicine, as well as new surgical techniques, understanding that the fascia is one contiguous sheet of soft tissue. That principle is known as bio or biological tensegrity, biological tensional integrity. Next slide. So to summarize a 60 year old woman with whiplash injury, she car accident 18 months ago, whiplash pain is eight out of 10. She has shoulder, neck and pain rating down the arm. She, the intervention that Dr. O'Neill Smith and I did, we had uh, multiple trigger point injections based on fascial anatomy. And then I'll sh the next morning we saw her about 15 hours later and this site will share the audio. Hi, it's Dr. Angela Yaki and, and Dr. Kathleen O'Neill Smith. And our patient came back. So it's been uh, about 15, 16. It's been overnight. 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 So overnight. how are you doing? So much better. And I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting to just gradually, hopefully, feel better over a couple of weeks. And I woke up this morning, slept better. I actually, I didn't wake up with all this pain. Mm -hmm. Wow. I, Woke up once, got back to sleep, not my usual. And then I just realized I woke up, I'm taking my shower. So my arm's some going up. Yeah, let's do that. And was, it's not like a brick wall back here. There's one hard spot, but we're okay. it's so much better. We had injected. Okay, so basically um, the teaching point here with the case is that it's important to understand fascial anatomy not only should we understand it when there's a problem or rehabilitation such as this patient needs, but we need to understand fascial anatomy to do pre-work so that as we age, we age well, or if we're going into surgery, we're moving the fascia in a certain way so that after surgery, we'll rehabilitate well. So we don't never want to wait until you're injured uh, to do preventive movements. And that those classes are offered under our, my private practice called North Florida Integrative Medicine. And those are co-taught with a Chinese medicine doctor, Marlene Colangelo, who happens to be an exercise physiologist and a fascial expert. So you wanna go into aging years, as well as any procedures, any triathlons, anything like that, knowing fascial anatomy, moving fascial lines, for example, using a roller, uh, making sure your movements are smooth and circular instead of just back and forth. And those are the basic principles that we're going to share with you during this month. The FAQ then, next slide, is that uh, in the words of Dr. Robert Schleip, he's a PhD who lives in Munich. I had the privilege of meeting him uh, last December. He's one of the contributors to our textbook, Fascia Function and Medical Application. Um, he basically says, by the way, he's one of two world uh, experts who brought fascia anatomy to uh, the United States. Uh, presenting at Harvard University in 2008 with Dr. Helene Langervan. Dr. Langervan is actually uh, the chair of the NIH's Integrative and Complementary Medicine um, Department. So it's really neat that, that it's coming to the forefront now. So he says that fascia is the dense, irregular connective tissue that surrounds and connects every muscle, even the last myofibril, and every single organ of the body forming continuity throughout the body. And that's what I was trying to explain. Um, it's, not only, uh, it's not only like surrounding an organ, it's surrounding every cell. And that's the importance of why we believe that fascia, fascial health, fluid, fluid dynamics are so critical to feeling well, moving well. You all know as we age that we get stiffer especially women in the perimenopausal transition when we're not giving estrogen replacement therapy or maybe we can't take it. Today, I saw a 53-year-old woman who's postmenopausal who's trying to prevent 
uh, secondary recurrence of breast cancer, very strong family history. So not only that, but she has a genetic condition of collagen, the major protein building block of fascia. And it's a condition called Ehlers-Danlos syndrome type three. So not only does she have Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, She's got breast cancer, so I can't give her estrogen, which in the chapter that Dr. O'Neill Smith and I wrote in the, the textbook on fascia, it's on hormones and fascia and how important it is to keep the fascia healthy. She's now being given um, an estrogen blocking agent to prevent her recurrence of cancer. Thank goodness when I saw her today, she said only her hands are hurting worse than the rest of her body. But when I asked her where she hurt, she actually said, Dr. Aki, you should probably ask me where I don't hurt. She hurts everywhere. And so the intervention I did with her over the past month, however, and she thinks it actually helped, was I gave her collagen. I gave her 15 grams of collagen with vitamin C every day. And if you're exercising, you're, wanna, you're going to want to do that protocol 30 to 45 minutes prior to exercise, because there has been studies in athletes, division one athletes, where it actually helps protect the joints. So again, collagen, 15 grams with low dose vitamin C. Now with vitamin C in this COVID times, I'm recommending 2000 up to 4,000 milligrams of vitamin C. With the study on taking vitamin C to make your collagen, they're only talking like 50 milligrams of vitamin C. So vitamin C, you can go over 50 milligrams, but you need at least 50 milligrams of vitamin C plus collagen. And again, 15 milligrams of collagen. I will mention that you can find collagen uh, in your bone broth, your, you could boil fish, the parts you normally throw away and uh, basically get all that gelatinous stuff that's actually um, like the bones and the head and the eyeballs. Those are, um, I'm Asian, I'm Filipino. So I'm happy to say that I was taught how to make fish soup as a youngster, uh, but I never knew the utility of that thick gelatinous uh, part of the fish stew. It's really kind of hard. I didn't realize how healthy that is for the gut and the soft tissue, but it is part of my culture to eat like that. And I think that that's why we're tell telling people to make sure they're, they're having bone broth, not only for their gut, but their soft tissue. If you don't like that, then get, make sure you buy really super clean collagen. Realize collagen is from bone marrow and you wanna make sure that the source of the bone marrow is clean. For example, with conventional raised cows, um, if you're taking conventional collagen from conventional raised cows, you might be getting concentrated poison because when humans or animals take poison, for example, a pesticide, or if I ate a salad that was non-organic and it was full of pesticide, my body would be smart enough to try to detoxify it through the liver and put it in the dark closet of my body. Well, where are they? The dark closets are places of fat. Fat is like the brain, right? That's why, you know, I remember in 2005, my old medical building, somebody had sprayed pesticide outside the building and my staff and I got these horrible migraine headaches. Like the same afternoon, I had to close my office. And that's because the body parked it in, my, in our brain. So I had to detoxify us. The same with the bone marrow. Bone marrow is mostly fat. So bone marrow is where you get the collagen. So make sure whatever source you have, be it bones of pigs or cows or skins of pigs, cow and fish or bones of fish that you actually have really, really clean sources. Okay, I hope that helps. Um, now let's talk about classical anatomy versus fascial anatomy and what is the difference? Well, when I was in medical school and taking gross anatomy now, wow, 1990, that was 30 years ago, um, we learned the insertions and origins of muscles in a two-dimensional fashion, kind of like a lever, kind of like a carpenter would think up. It actually never really made sense to me. I actually just had to memorize it because I actually have to understand things as a whole before I really understand it. But anyway, for example, with this biceps and the shoulder girdle, for example, this patient that I was explaining how her shoulder hurt, if you were thinking in classical anatomy, she, she would never get better. The orthopedics operate on her shoulder. It froze. It froze, and they did a redo, and it didn't get any better because they weren't thinking in terms of fascia. They were thinking in terms of classical anatomy, two dimensions, origin, and insertions. 
Well, it turns out that what we really should be thinking is more in fascial anatomy. And I'll illustrate this with a um, carpenters uh, named Geppetto. Next slide. You all know the story of Pinocchio from Tuscany, Italy in the 1880s. You've got the carpenter, his name is Geppetto. He's a man. He's used to carpentry, like two dimensions, right angles. So he envisions a boy like a puppet, but you can imagine how this puppet moves like a puppet, okay? But we're not made by a man, we're made by a creator. And therefore we move in multiple dimensions. So once he became spirited, this Pinocchio, he actually moves like a human being. Human beings are amazing, amazing for repair, but amazing for uh, movement. That we can move like this actually is beyond conception that we are only recently understanding, for example, the thoracal lumbar fascia in the back has more than five layers and able to move in multiple directions, not just front and back, not just side to side, which is why it's so critical. You know, there's an epidemic in lumbar back pain. A lot of Americans exercise front and back, side to side, right? Lift like this, etc. When really we should do, be doing some Asian movements that are more circular. Most of our embryological time is made, we're made by, make, by fibrils or straws, which is circular. It's not square. So we should be moving in a circular fashion. So now it makes sense why in Chinese medicine, part of their medicine is movement therapy. I remember seeing pictures of parks in China at lunch hour where you have 20, 30, 40, 50 year old office workers out there moving, doing Tai Chi or Qigong, which is the mother of Tai Chi in a circular fashion. They're doing the pre-work to age well because they're moving the soft tissue in the multiple directions like this Pin Pinocchio so that they can maintain being limber. Again, like everything else, if you don't use it, you will lose it. So if you're not moving in, in ways like Qigong, Tai Chi, yoga, you will get stiff. Not only are you required to be able to move in multiple directions like this Pinocchio, there are methods to keep the fascia healthy. Those are all taught in our group medical visits. Also in the textbook, you should read about it, fascia function and medical application. I would invite you, however, if you're part of North Florida Integrative Medicine to join our group medical visits because we now have movement and pain classes led by fascia experts and myself teaching about the science of soft tissue and fascia. In my opinion, unless you understand fascia, not, you cannot understand what I'm passionate about, which is functional medicine, integrative medicine, regenerative medicine, because those mesenchymal stem cells or medicinal signaling cells or MSTs are located in the mesoderm, which makes the fascia internal medicine, which brings it together. So that's why I love fascia. And I've been on fascia now for about two and a half years since the very day I met David Lazondek. I've been passionately, fervently trying to understand fascia and we've been getting wonderful clinical results therefore. Next slide. This is a dissection of not classical anatomy, but fascial anatomy. And this is used with kind permission from Thomas Myers. You can get um, his book, as well as Dave Lezondek's book, which is now translated to nine languages uh, on Amazon, actually. Uh, but basically, this is a posterior dissection of, of a posterior back line. And you can see these are the toes, and that's the skull. You can understand by looking at this that the tendons of the toes to the calf muscle to the uh, back of the thigh to the lumbar spine to the back of the neck to the scalp are all connected. This makes it easy to understand why. If you have plantar fasciitis, you can actually have headaches. Why, if you have chronically tight hamstrings, you could get back pain. Uh, why it's important that if you have chronic headaches, you do what's called myofascial work or structural integration work on the whole line. Over here is another neat dissection. And basically this is the tongue and this is the di diaphragm on the right. The diaphragm looks like a little butterfly and that's the tongue. And I know this because I was actually a vocal performance opera major and I actually treat a lot of professional voice users. I saw one today, he's a coach. 
but I also have theater and opera. And they all tell me, oh, Dr. Aki, give me a beta blocker so I can perform and actually use my voice because when I'm stressed, I can't project or I can't sing. Well, the treatment of that is actually diaphragmatic exercises, which would actually relax the tongue and the larynx so they could do better. That's mind body though. Diaph when you relax the diaphragm, you recruit the opposite of the fight or flight or sympathetic nervous system. You recruit the re rest and digest relaxation system called the parasympathetic nervous system. So any type of Qigong, Tai Chi yoga always involves the breath. In fact, if you're feeling stressed in any way, just take a breath. Oh, you feel better and you'll perform better because it's recruiting the rest, digest, and relax part of your autonomic or automatic nervous system, intimately related to the soft tissue or the fascia. Very important. You know, right now with COVID, they actually said, uh, at least in a CDC study, published by the Morbidity and Mortality Report in June of uh, 20, 2020, that four out of 10 Americans are anxious or depressed. So the intervention, in my opinion, right off the bat is let's learn how to breathe. Let's learn how to move and, and recruit the rest and digest, relax parasympathetic nervous system. Next slide. So the marbled meat around, this looks like marbled meat, but it's that white tissue that is actually the soft tissue of the fascia. The primary proteins are collagen, which is for strength and gram per gram, collagen is stronger than steel. Do you believe it? Gram per gram, collagen is stronger than steel. And then the elastic fibers, which make it stretchy and you need to have a dynamic balance of strength and stretch in order to be able to move like Pinocchio and not be stiff as we age which is why it's so important to be moving in all directions. Again, not just front and back, not just side to side as we're traditionally taught in athletics. In the Western world, <coughs> I, I believe the best program is a combination of circular movements with this type of high intensity interval training designed over the course of a week, which as a total aside, but um, I wanted to share with this group first, uh, Dr. O'Neill Smith and I are planning a really really exciting uh, virtual pursuing optimal wellness group beginning the end of January. You'll have three touches a week for 12 weeks. We're gonna be focusing on healthy movement, breathing, sleep, optimal nutrition, optimal aging and hormone balance. And we're gonna limit it to 12. So if you're interested in that, if you wouldn't mind messaging in to Emily or at the chat, we'll reach out to you and give you further information. But it's actually, um, we're, we're giving our own patients the first option to join in. And then after that, we'll open it up to the whole world. But you're really gonna like what we teach, especially when it comes to movement. Do I don't know if you remember, Dr. Kathleen O'Neill Smith is actually a 1984 Olympian in rowing. And she subsequently has been an Olympic coach. Can you imagine? She and, she and I are gonna be leading this program to help you become your, the best version of yourself in the middle of COVID-19. And so, yes, we would invite you. Thank you, Peggy. Peggy says she's interested. So we'll remember to reach out to you. Um, but yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's oftentimes best if you actually get the people that you love or you live with to join in. I think I've shared this with you before that they've done a study about three or four years ago that people who hang out with other people who are healthy get healthy and people who hang out with people who are unhealthy or obese get obese. The other thing is you are essentially, the, uh, you're gonna be reflecting the health and wellness and mental well-being of the people that are the five closest people to you. And so you wanna make sure that you have a support group that's really health-minded, optimal health, willing to make the slight shifts over the course of 12 weeks to really help you be well, perform well, not have pain, and actually really just enjoy, um, despite being sheltered in, perhaps enjoy doing the things that we're gonna teach you how to do to adapt to this new situation. We have a lot of people in our practice who actually got healthy during COVID-19, and we wanna help you do that as well if you haven't already. Finally, I wanted to introduce my 
and he'll say my Sherpa because I ask him all the questions. David Lazondak, he's uh, pictured in the upper right of this picture. Um, I heard him speak and teach at the University of Florida in the Integrative Medicine Department only two and a half years ago. And it changed the tra trajectory of my passion because it, my eyes were opened. It was almost like amazing grace. Uh, I was blind, but now I see because what he explained that one day, and I put it in the preface of uh, the book that we co-edited on the right together, what he explained that one day really opened up my eyes to healing such that every time I walk in an exam room now or do telehealth, I have different vision of how to, to manage people, not only with function, but with pain, with hormone balancing, which is critical. In the soft tissue or fascia, there's fluid, there's proteins. In the chapter, chapter seven of the book on the right, fascia function and medical applications. It's very important that you know that appropriate hormone balancing, especially estrogen in women and testosterone in men are very important in keeping the soft tissue proteins healthy. Another important but often, often overlooked aspect of healthy fascia is fluid dynamics that you have about, you know, depending on your weight, you have about three to four liters of fluid in your fascia that's contiguous with your bloodstream or plasma. Now, when we're curious to sample what's going on in the fascia, we draw blood out of your arm, spin it down, and we analyze the plasma. And we say, oh, Ms. Smith, you're inflamed. You have an elevated HS, highly specific C-reactive protein, or you're resting. You have an elevated oxidized LDL or a low glutathione level. What we're doing is like trying to figure out what's going on in the soft tissue and fascia. And remember the basic core principle of what Dr. Kathleen and I, O'Neill Smith and I teach is that when there is fire or inflammation, when there is rust or oxidative stress, it equals immune dysregulation or the opposite is also true. If there's immune dysregulation, you have an autoimmune disease or you have Hashimoto's or you have rheumatoid arthritis or you have something like that, you hurt everywhere because it causes fire and rust. Um, and I could put that in the context of COVID. COVID, um, when it's affecting you, affects all three. And in fact, um, give you a little hint, Dr. O'Neill Smith and I are working on very progressive um, protocols and now proposing a clinical trial to treat post-COVID syndrome, which affects three out of four people who have had COVID. They have chronic, what looks like chronic fatigue syndrome or, or um, muscle pains, brain fog, fatigue, uh, shortness of breath, can't exercise. I've seen a lot of patients recover from COVID and end up with these symptoms that make them so tired and dysfunctional. I actually had to fill out three family medical leave acts just this past week or two for post COVID syndrome. And because the whole syndrome is new, there's not a whole lot of understanding yet, but we're trying to be in the forefront of helping our patients get better. So we've been asked to put together clinical protocols. But when we think about what they're complaining of is actually has to do with fascial inflammation, immune dysregulation and oxidative stress. So that's a hint of what we're coming down, what we're working on next, because we're always trying to help our patients in progressive, safe, effective ways. So I bet you'll never look at Pinocchio the same again. I know I won't. I know when I look at Pinocchio, I think this is not Geppetto the carpenter's creation. This is a boy who has a spirit. There, there is a creator here who made his fascia look so amazing that he could dance like a human. And that is a difference between Geppetto's creation of the puppet Pinocchio boy versus this dancing Pinocchio, I believe is the amazing world called Fascia Land. And so I'm going to put a shout out now to David Lazondak, who has been my mentor, guide, and he says my Sherpa uh, in Fascia Land. And I'm so, so excited to talk to you about uh, fascia because honestly, I want the world to know, but especially all the healthcare professionals to really understand fascia in a functional way. Uh, and uh, it's all written out in fascia function and medical applications. So that'll wrap it up for my formal comments. I'm looking at some of the chat here, uh, vibration, stimulus, and fascia. Thank you, Fabiana, for asking. Fascinating that there are clinical studies now where touch, vibration, heat, all affects the fascia. You know that if you've ever had a massage, but what's fascinating is that we know the fluid dynamic in the extracellular matrix, which is the proteins and the fluids in the fascia, when you manipulate them, you 
with feet, stroking them in a certain way, it actually affects the cell's DNA through proteins called integrins. The integrins actually in the cytoplasm and it translates through actin and myosin, all you science types out there, to actually affect protein uh, transcription and translation. So it does affect the DNA. Um, that's a new study. That's uh, Anthony Stecco. He's an MD, PhD out of NYU. He published that study. So I do believe in my lifetime in medicine, we will see massage therapy covered much better, but it won't be standard massage therapy. It would be massage therapists or any types of manual therapists, such as occupational therapy and physical therapy with advanced training in a, a field called structural integration because structural integration therapists have to understand fascial anatomy. Um, let's see, Jan says she had, continues to have some pain. Can she make an appointment? Jan's in the practice, absolutely. Just make an appointment. And it, all of us, you know, I've been teaching on fascia within our own group um, within at North Florida Integrated Medicine now for a year. Uh, I, Dr. Kathleen and I spoke to several hundred doctors at uh, Integrated uh, integrative health symposium prior to COVID in February in Manhattan. Um, so yeah, happy to talk to you about that. Um, and just realize that you need to ask the question, if you've had any chronic pain or injury that has failed conventional approach, don't hesitate to ask, to ask your professional, do you understand fascia? Do you understand structural integration? Because if you're not making any progress, you have to try another route. And this is uh, honestly, it's brand new. We're trying to actually get in the medical schools to teach this type of anatomy and not just throw away the fascia. When I was in medical school, we would literally take the soft tissue and throw it in the garbage so that I had a clean dissection that would show me origin insertions of my biceps, but it didn't help me understand the human body as a whole. Yeah, so there's a question from Peggy about different types of physical therapy. Realize that when we're talking about um, compression and tension, there's different variations on a theme and people have different titles to it. But the same is th we need to balance compression with tension and stretch so that the net effect is health and appropriate amount. If we didn't have biological tensional integrity, there's no way we'd be able to stand up like this against our skeleton. So we need compression and tension happening at the same time. And uh, that's the beauty. That's, to me, the fascinating part about fascia and fascial anatomy. I'm going to whet your appetite to come next week. Um, I've always believed that there's electrical charge in me and you and anybody who doesn't believe it, just look at their grandchildren scuffling, shuffling across the rug to kind of like uh, shock their friends. We have electrical charge. Well, it turns out this newer concept in biological in biology called piezoelectricity, P-I-E-Z-O, electricity, says that collagen has a potential energy, an electrical field in it. And it's very important to understand piezoelectricity when we talk about healing and wellness. It makes perfect sense to me why the energy medicine and Chinese medicine acupuncture actually works because it takes into account that concept of piezoelectricity. So for now, I'm going to sign off to you all and Emily and I wish you well. I would encourage you to listen to Emily because I picked some certain supplements for you to think about. Phosphatidylcholine, which regenerate, helps to the, the nerves be well, vitamin C and collagen, some hormone balancers and omega-3 fats. But don't forget the basics. Two liters of fluid a day for most people, if you don't have any heart failure, kidney problems, most of us are under hydrated. So if you're hurting anyway, wear chronic headaches, migraines, joint pain, aches and pains, start with hydration preferably balanced electrolytes. So for now, everybody be safe, be well, and God bless you. I'll see you next week. We'll talk with more about fascia with Dr. Kathleen O'Neill-Smith. Thank you, Emily. I'll have you take it away. Thank you, Dr. Aiki. All right. So as far as those supplements go, uh, vitamin C, always very vital. Never can go wrong with some vitamin C. So if you would like to take the 10% off of our vi vitamin C on our Get Healthy store, that code is going to be Fire them up, Vite C, V I T C. And then, as far as the collagen, as Dr. Aki mentioned multiple times, collagen is just amazing for the whole body. If you're someone who does not like fish soup, as she mentioned, or like me, does not like chicken broth, this is a perfect way to get your supplement into your um, 
you know, your daily meal, you just add it into a coffee or a smoothie or even um, into baked goods as you're mixing your flour. And this is just a great way to improve your hair, skin, nail, joint function, just everything. And that code is going to be Fire em Up Collagen, C O L L A G E N. Again, Fire em Up Bite C and Fire em Up Collagen will get you 10% off of each of the supplements listed here. Next, we have the phosphatidylcholine, which is great for brain health and nerves. Um, this is also going to be 10% off on our website. And this is going to be Fire em Up Body Bio, B O D Y B I O. Again, Fire em Up body bio um, on our get healthy website just type in that code at the very end and it will take 10 percent off of your order of phosphatidylcholine next we have the omegas which we've mentioned many weeks before omega is just all around great for your immune health heart eye brain function just all all around you're going to get good benefits. Um, for someone who is not a vegan you're going to want just the pro omega and that's going to be Fire em up omega, O-M-E-G-A. For those who are vegan though and still would like to take this supplement, they have an algae omega pill and that code is going to be fire em up algae, A-L-G-A-E. Either of these codes will get you 10% off of either of the products on this page. And then finally, we have some hormone balance. Um, Everyone is always searching for a need of hormone balance. So both of these soft gels and capsules, we have both for men and for women on our website. And the code is going to be Fire em Up Hormones, H-O-R-M-O-N-E-S. And you can take 10% off of both of these supplements listed here on our Get Healthy store. Next, um, going off of hormones, Dr. Aki has her first book that she put out a few years ago called Fine Tune Your Hormone Symphony. She's mentioned this a few times. Um, it hasn't been a big thing we've talked about since our COVID book has been brought up, but now that we're back into hormones, this is always a great go-to book. This is one of our main uh, images that we use to kind of explain the whole model. And if you're interested in this book, you can find it on our firemupdoctors.com website or Amazon. Next, as always, we have our Kick COVID-19 to the Curb guidebook still available, $29.99 paperback or $9.99 for an ebook, which can be purchased on Amazon, Kindle, Google Play, or Barnes & Noble for $9.99. Um, just as every other month, we have the same special going on, which again, everyone should be taking advantage of, especially during this time with your vitamin C and zinc. Those are two very important supplements to keep in your daily um, log of vitamins that you take. These are great to always just have around for if you're feeling down or sick. And again, as long as you can show proof of a receipt, whether that's a um, paper receipt, a email, a screenshot of your purchase, we will go ahead and honor the 20% off of each of these vitamins. And then lastly, as Dr. Aki mentioned today, and she will be mentioning the rest of this month, her fascia function and medical applications textbook is still available. We have um, some limited paperback copies that are signed available at our NFIM office, which can be done curbside pickup for $55. If you're interested in this, just send us an email at NFIMGMV, as in Gators Make Victory, at gmail.com, and we will get you set up. It's also available on our firemupdoctors.com website and amazon.com. But as I've mentioned in the past, the 20% off discount code does not work on Amazon, only through our website. So if you want to take advantage of that, go to our website or send us an email and we will honor the 20% discount code, which is SCI20. Sorry for all that chit chat and mention all these supplements, but they are very, very vital to what we are talking about this month. So if you're interested at all, um, this is going to be posted on Facebook. So if you forgot any of those codes or you want to send them to someone else, our Facebook page, Fire em Up Doctors, will have a, this video saved that you can send to friends and family. But that is all that I have for you this week. And we'll be back next week with some more um, tissue and skin. So everyone have a wonderful weekend and yes, that's it. We're so glad you joined us today. We hope we've given you the tools to take control of your health. For more good medicine, 
and information about any treatments, supplements, and resources discussed today, please visit us at www.firemopdoctors.com. That's F-I-R-R-I-M up doctors.com. And wherever you're listening from, remember to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube and podcast channels so you don't miss out. The information provided is not a substitute for professional medical advice. This should not be used to diagnose, treat, or manage health problems without consultation. If you do experience any of the symptoms discussed today, please contact your nearest healthcare professional.